Does oil cooler size matter or heat exchanger size? Does it matter? And how big heat exchanger do you want? How much cooling do you need? Well, that depends. So, first, when you're mounting these coolers, make sure air can flow through them. Because if you just mount it like this, the air will take the easiest path. So, most commonly, the air will go on the sides. Of course, some air will go through the cooler, like this. Uh, but most air will go the easiest way, which is around the cooler. And still, you will get a pretty good cooling on your oil, on the fluid within this heat exchanger. But imagine you would lead the air through ducting, which OEM applications are really, really good at achieving. The high pressure area in the front of the car, uh, leading the air through ducts, roading it through this cooler, so all the air gets pr pressed through the cooler and can bring out more heat from the cooler. So this way, if you really, really push the air through the cooler, you can have a smaller cooler because more air is flowing through the cooler and brings out the heat from the cooler, which in turn cools the engine or the transmission or whatever application you're being connected to. So if you're doing that, routing the air through the cooler and choosing a bigger cooler, you, you will have a really, really efficient cooling system. We used to recommend to mount the biggest cooler you can fit. And most of the times you cannot fit this, <laughs> this size of the cooler. Maybe sometimes, but mostly not. Uh, this is when you go with a smaller cooler or maybe slightly bigger than this one. But fit as big of a cooler you can, you, you can imagine. With the thermostat mounted in your cooling system, the temperature will go down really, really fast if needed. One thing you can add is a small fan, because when the car or the vehicle is standing still, the oil can be just as hot as it was when the car was running. So a small fan can keep the airflow through the oil cooler when the car or vehicle is standing still.